see if we can get this started. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess this might be called attic to basement cleanouts with raccoons. Um, I started out as an organizer in 1997 in Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C. In 2001, uh, I stopped organizing uh, people's kitchens uh, to help them live in it better to cleaning out their kitchens and their whole house either after they'd gone into a nursing home or died. So most of my clients I would say I never met but I would always feel like I knew them by the time I finished going through all their cupboards and drawers. And I was hired by whoever was the executor or the guardian. I liked working with attorneys very much. I hadn't had much contact with them up until then. <clears throat> so one of the things I did was, even if people were still alive, they might have been moved into a nursing home or uh, Alzheimer's unit, and I would be asked to go in and clean out the house, look for important papers, look for um, money and jewelry and titles to cars and paid off mortgage papers and every house was different. I really enjoyed it and I felt like I would knew I would treat their things as the way I'd want my parents things to be treated because uh, I didn't live in the same state as my parents and a lot of times the people had no family because they remained single. They came to DC during World War II they got a career and with the Defense Department or something like that and decided that, that they just wanted to work. They didn't want to go back to whatever state they came from and they never met Mr. Wright. So the, a lot of women came here to work during World War II. And um, men also, or else their families had moved away. They got married, had kids, and then their kids married, moved, moved away for college and, or got married and moved away for jobs. And they didn't know how to get rid of things here in the D.C. area. So they would call on me and I learned as I went along, but I found people I could trust and that were reasonably priced to haul away junk or take things to auction. Because I did meet some companies that just would not change the way they did things and so they either um, decided they had to have money right then and there. If they picked up junk they needed me to pay them. Well I couldn't do that. When I was first getting started I had no money to um, and I wasn't going to go in debt hundreds of dollars for a client that I hadn't been paid for yet. So um, at the end of each job I would get paid I started doing them by myself, but after a few years I did get helpers. Um, started out with one man that would help me every once in a while, and we're still friends today. And he would, you know, move a chair for me or put a TV in the car for me if I needed to take it to a nursing home. Because some of the people did move to nursing homes and the house was sold to pay for their nursing home bill. Um, I started out probably with only 10 clients the first year and it grew to, when I finished 15 years later, I had done over 800 houses in the Washington DC area. So I thought I would uh, start with one of my earliest houses, which also was one of my most unusual houses. People will still talk about it today that were involved back then. <laughs> and um, I did take some pictures, because it was, here's the house we first started with, that we had to take the plywood off the doors every day to get in the house because it was condemned. Because once the neighbors found the husband in the car where he was sleeping, and he had passed away overnight in the winter, um, the firemen went into the house to tell the wife and saw that she was living like this. Um, this is the dining room. This was the living room. This was the kitchen. No cooking going on there. Hot 
plate and TV and water. That's all she needed. This was going down into the basement where the lawyer didn't want us to go because there was no electricity and he thought there were live wires down there. Uh, very dark, so I'm glad I didn't have to go down there and I guess the developer had to dig all that out and take it to the dump. This was in the living room where she was sleeping on the couch. I had to crawl over the sofa to get to the other end where the higher pillows are to get into the hallway to go to the bedrooms, which were full. And there were two bedrooms and a bath back there, but they weren't uh, working. Uh, the bathroom wasn't working that I remember. So, let's see. Okay, so I thought I'd finish up by saying uh, the job took 11 days. I had four people working with me off and on. We totaled 100 hours. And the house, which um, was a rambler at 768 square feet, so it was fairly small, was bought originally um, by this woman for $169,000. It was sold in 2004 to a developer for $334,000. He knocked down the house. It was on a corner lot, so he was able to dig out the basement, get all the uh, water and boxes of things out, and build a two-story house on it that is 2,900 square feet, which now appraises for a million dollars. So it's very close to the Washington Beltway, which is a uh, very busy, probably till midnight, <laughs> and again at five in the morning it gets busy. So um, I thought I would start with that house because it was one of my more interesting houses. And next time we will talk about another house. Uh, hopefully we'll give you some tips whether you're going to start an estate clean out business or you are going to do it for a family member. And I'll also explain why the title of this series is called Attic to Basement Estate Cleanouts with Raccoons. Bye.